Hi, this is John from GPS Training. What we're going to do in this short video is look at communicating when you're off grid or out in the hills. So, a traditional navigational GPS, I've just got some examples here, which is the Garmin GPS Map 66S or the Garmin Oregon 700 or the SatMap Active 20 are great navigational devices. We can pre program our routes and these GPS will navigate us around that walk or cycle ride or whatever activity you're doing. But you can't communicate with other people when you're off grid as such. So great navigational devices. But let's think about when we go off grid or we go into the countryside, how we can communicate. So most of you will have a smartphone. So here's my iPhone 11. iPhone 11, great um, smartphone. Um, <laughs> thousand quid a phone really isn't it so quite an expensive piece of kit if you buy it in entirety now i don't know if you listen to our gps training podcast if not have a listen to it in episode 32 we discuss some of my experiences about using my iphone over the winter months which are that um it's getting flat by lunchtime yeah i can uh, put it in a um a, i can use a battery booster uh, to boost it and also to make it waterproof i can put it in an aqua pack which is what we've got underneath here but it is an expensive smartphone that does go flat especially when we're going off grid so in the in our podcast number 33 which depends when you're listening to this um it's just going to be released in april of uh, this year uh, which is 2020 uh, we discussed with a, a guest from the mountain rescue guy called paul freeman about using your smartphone when out in the countryside and his advice with a smartphone like this is switch it off switch it switch it off if you do need to use it, you've then got battery life in there. Keep it close to your body, keep it warm, put it in an aqua pack or something else that's going to keep it waterproof. And if you do need it in an emergency, climb up to the top of the hill and he'll talk you through the step by step procedures of what we need to be giving to the emergency services. Another option that Paul came up with when we discussed it on the podcast is a traditional old phone. So if you've got an old phone, this is an old Nokia phone, that should be bullet for I think 10 or 15 pounds put it in your aqua pack it's a smartphone uh, sorry it's a, it's a simple phone rather than a smartphone fantastic battery life on these devices isn't it again put it in an aqua pack um a, if you need it the battery life on this is we're not talking a day day and a half or when we're in the hills half a day we're now talking number of days that we charge it so if you if you're on a budget and you want that uh, option when you're in the hills you know, think about getting an old um, brick phone as we would call them put it in a waterproof container and keep that in the bottom of your rucksack just in case if you do have problems we need to get some height get a mobile phone signal and call for emergency help but there are some purpose-built devices that overcome this spot is one of the key people uh, that produce this so we've got a spot x and a spot gen 3 not expensive devices spot gen 3 is just over a hundred pounds we do need a contract with them again not an expensive contract they are a few pounds per month uh, for the spot gen 3 and a similar contract charge for the spot x main difference is we can do two-way satellite communication with the x but just do one-way satellite communication with the spot key thing about the spot it uses a low orbit satellite system for its communication so use the global star system for this and what we can do now with these devices we've got two-way satellite communication so you can send messages to to and fro with people over the spot gen 3 we've just got one-way satellite communication people can see where you are so we can do live tracking even with no mobile phone signal because it's using the satellites people can see where you are now you can give access to people via an app or via a, a web uh, portal and you also on the spot gen 3 have preset messages so you know, preset messages could be everything okay this way i am or perhaps i could do with some help and we also have an emergency an sos button so in an emergency we can press an sos button and even without a mobile phone signal because it's working via the satellites it contacts houston in texas which will manage our rescue from anywhere in the world in the uk they would just contact mountain rescue mountain rescue at the detail and they can see exactly where you are and seek you down the problem with the spot three is it's just one-way communication so you send your message away but they can't send a message back to you where the spot x we've got this two-way communication so you can send a message and other people 
uh, can reply to you. So spot, really good. Key thing with the spot we found, this is actually our spot. We, used to, we have a business called Shepherds Walks Holidays as well, and we loan spots to solo walkers. The key thing for the spot for me is, it just attached on the top of the rucksack. It just runs off, off a normal batteries. Fantastic battery life on the spot. The reason for that is it doesn't always have a satellite fix. I'm going to switch on, but it has, um, has these lights that light up at the top. It's what it does is if you're doing a tracking, say every 15 minutes or every 10 minutes, it gets a satellite signal every 10 minutes and then it has a sends that satellite signal so it doesn't have your location all the time every 10 minutes it switches on says where's where are you gets that satellite fix and then sends that location i had an experience last year where i started a four or five day trek with a spot when i switched on the red light was on eg the battery light was the battery was low and i walked for the full four days doing full tracking with the battery light on low so that shows you the um, the, the, the great battery capabilities of the Spot Gen 3. I say literally just over £100, cheap contract, a really good introduction into um, off-grid communication. With the Spot X, has got less good reviews, but again is, is a Spot's next step into two-way satellite communication. So that's what we see from the Spot. Now Garmin have been in this field for quite a while, so Garmin have got some options, quite a big box there for this one, but anyway, for either side it looks a bit nicer, does it? So Garmin have got some options in the marketplace, so um, the Garmin 2A satellite communication use something called the Iridium satellites, which is the same as what we'll see on the sat phone. So again, better capability and, and both of all these three devices are two-way satellite communicators. So first of all, InReach Mini. InReach Mini is exactly, you see, a very small device, great battery life, built-in battery, again got SOS buttons and two-way satellite communication. With the Garmin, it's very similar to the Spot. We can set up preset messages so you can easily send these messages from it. What the um, the InReach Mini also does, it will tether with various other devices. So going back to our 66S, if you've got a Garmin 66S, it will tether with that 66S, and then you can send the messages via your 66S, but you're just using this as an aerial. Also, if you've got a Phoenix watch, that's my Phoenix that I've got on my wrist, um, a Phoenix 5 um, Plus, and six and moving on from there we can tether it with there so again if you get a message on your inReach mini it shows on your smartwatch that you've got from gone so that's a way you can do it finally it tethers with a mobile phone so if you want to use the keypad on your phone e.g the touch screen on your phone to input data and messages it will tether with the InReach Mini. So InReach Mini gets used a lot by mountain bikers, by fell runners, just on the size and again great battery life on there. Garmin then brought out the 66i. 66i is just the same as the 66ST which is the top active version of the 66S, but now they're built in the in-reach technology into it's that two-way satellite communication. Again, we've got our SOS button on the side under a little flap, and this we can send messages to and fro via the satellites. And I must mention the Garmin contract for this is a little bit more expensive than what we'll find on the spot but we've got superior coverage by using the Iridium system. So 66i, this is actually my own personal GPS unit. This is what I use all the time. I really like it. We've got live tracking on there. I've got my preset messages. I can send messages to people. Nice thing about preset messages and all these devices, you can send them to multiple people. So you can send them to multiple email addresses and text um, text messages as well. Whenever you send a message, it also has a link on that so the person can see exactly where they can click on it. Usually it brings up Google Earth or a satellite imagery and they can see exactly where you are. 66i has a built-in battery, which is what makes it different than 66S and 66ST because it's really powering those two devices. 66i, I think great piece of kit and we're gonna see more of this technology coming into outdoor GPS units. So we've got both a navigational device and also a two-way satellite communicator. Again, don't need mobile phone signal, it's working off the satellite to do that. And then the most recent addition is the 86i. 
The 86i is really just a 66i. It's a little bit bigger. It's made, made more for the people are going on the water. So canoeists or, or sailors and this kind of thing because it has buoyancy built in. So slightly larger, has a buoyancy built in. Exactly the same interface that we can find on the 66i. You can also put your GB map cards in there, your ordnance survey mapping on it. So again, it's exactly the same as an 86i, except that we've got this buoyancy feature available. So that's what we've got on the market um, for this two-way satellite communication. It's something I think is going to come more into the fore going forward. I've been using the C6i now for quite a while. I really like it. I love the battery capability of it. I like the way that we can send this communication. And it's all in one device and I really like that going forward. I very much hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, uh, please do get in touch with ourselves here at GPS Training. I have mentioned the podcast. Again, if you do, just if you listen to podcasts, just Google the GPS Training podcast and we often talk about these things a little bit more in depth. Thanks for listening. It's very much appreciated.